Hello, uh, welcome to the Captain Community Meeting. Today we have uh, the first ever edition of the APAC meeting. Uh, so the intention was to have a meeting that would be suitable for Asian and Pacific region because we have uh, many contributors and mentors there, uh, well, and users too. Uh, but um, yeah, before that, uh, all the meetings used to happen uh, at 4 p.m. UTC and it's not a comfortable time. So we ran a poll and agreed that we would try meeting at this time. And uh, um, it's uh, 9 a.m. UTC, so Europe can uh, join as well. And uh, the most of captain contributors are based in Europe. So let's see and how it goes. And thanks a lot to Adam, Brett, and uh, Pavan uh, for joining. So we have uh, some people who have never joined uh, the meetings before, and uh, it's already a great start. So um, yeah, I'll share my screen just to show the agenda. So the topics uh, we have in our agenda for today. Um, so I would like to just have quick introductions before we start, then we can discuss the news, uh, the recent ones. Um, then uh, we can discuss specifics about Captain in the APAC region. So what we can do, what you would like to see happening in terms of meetings and whatever. Then uh, there was a proposal from, from Johannes uh, to add CAP65 uh, to the discussion. I also want to discuss uh, CAP60 briefly to see uh, what we can do about that. And then uh, we have a Google Summer of Code upcoming. So again, uh, it's a good opportunity to discuss uh, the ideas. So this is the items we have on the agenda. Would you like to add something else? It was good to me. Mm -hmm. And yes, then uh, the next uh, topic is just introductions. Uh, so usually we do it um, at um, um, community meetings. So for uh, people who just join, uh, if you would like to do a quick intro, it would be nice. So Brad, would you like to start? Yeah, um, my name's Brad. I'm originally from New Zealand, but living in Australia now. I've uh, worked with Adam before in the past with uh, an old company that I work for and um, and we just actually got a contract for Dynatrace today as well which is quite exciting we've been trying to get it for quite a while so I'll be um, getting really active and, and kept in, in the next week onwards. Thank you. So, Adam, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, Adam. Uh, as Brad says, we've we've worked together in the past. Uh, Merry Christmas, by the way. I haven't spoken to you <laughs> since then. Um, yeah, good. I'm just really happy that this is in a suitable time for uh, APAC. It's, uh, yeah, looking looking forward to more adoption of Earth Captain and, and APAC. So this is good, a good start. How do you use Captain? Sorry? Uh, how do you use Captain, Adam? Oh, um, yeah, so mainly, um, by, obviously, I work for Dynatrace, uh, mainly by work, but also um, I've been putting together a, um, a service catalog. So I'm part of the services team. I'm using Captain as a, a middleware um, layer to orchestrate some workflows, to build demo apps, to build um, kind of a tool agnostic um, delivery chain for our services team. So that's my that's my next project with Captain. Great. Uh, Pavan. Um, yeah, hi. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Pavan from India. And I'm new to Captain. I want to learn Captain. So, mm -hmm. we already tried it. Yeah, I will. I was able. I joined a workshop recently, and I was able to get a hands-on um, experience on that. So I want to learn more about it. Um. So yeah, Andy introduced himself uh, in the chat. 
So I'll probably do a quick intro. Yeah, my name is Alek Nilashev. I joined the community in July. Here, I currently work on various uh, open source programs. And yeah, I've been following Captain since 2009, and I think it's a great project for various kinds of orchestration and automation. So my intent here is to participate in community building um, and yeah, leveraging any opportunities we have, including running EPAC meetings and growing the EPAC community, because from contributor and user perspective, it's one of the biggest, biggest and fastly growing regions. So happy to do that and uh, happy to see this meeting happening. Uh, Johannes. Then I go next. Uh, one sec. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Johannes. I'm with the Cas Captain Project uh, since day one or day zero. Uh, yeah, I'm working with the project for three years now. I, I'm on the journey of how everything started and how we are as of today. And right now I'm in the role of the product manager taking a look or taking a picture of what we are currently planning to develop, what's in progress, what's on the agenda. Um, yeah, this is what I'm responsible for so that uh, we have all the features and the new enhancements aligned and to get out uh, cool progress. All right, yeah, then uh, Thomas, please. Yes, so hello, my name is Thomas. I'm uh, uh, principal engineer at Dynatrace and driving the internal adoption of Captain at, at Dynatrace. I'm also kind of a Captain contributor. So some of you might know my efforts regarding the operator stuff for Captain, or let's say my trials. Um, and yes, that's my role. So I give back to Oleg. Thomas is also a tech lead in uh, tech app delivery in the CNCF. Uh, the uh, talk, which is actually uh, a sponsor for Captain Incubation application. Uh, so, uh, thanks a lot, Thomas, for this uh, work. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it with introduction. So, nice to see everyone here. Uh, again, uh, let's see how these meetings go. Um, if they stick, I would be happy to host them on a regular basis. Uh, maybe every two weeks, we could discuss whether we would move some of the community meetings. So, for, day, for today, I decided to just follow the format we have uh, for Thursday meeting, more or less. Um, and yeah, then we can uh, re revise the format to see how we actually uh, could make it more efficient for participants. Um, so regarding recent news, we have uh, in the capital community, just uh, yesterday we had an uh, official uh, 0.12 release. So key highlights there. Johannes, would you like mm -hmm. to speak about it? Yeah, let me take that. Um, yeah, three key highlights of the 0.12 release. The first one is that the team is working on a so-called resource service. This will be a replacement of the current configuration service because the current configuration service yeah, is using an internal Git repository. And due to this reason, we cannot scale this gentleman. And um, yeah, the plan is now to have a new service that just relies on the, the upstream repo will become mandatory that you have an upstream configured then, but then we also can scale uh, this service and have uh, a replica set um, bigger than one. And this is then also um, allowing us that Captain itself can be scaled up and down depending on the demand. Second feature is uh, yeah, improvements in the UI uh, where it's now easier for someone to configure a webhook because now we have here a data picker that allows you to select to select uh, data from the event and then add it to the custom payload that you would send to your webhook, uh, just some UX improvements and make it easier for configuring a webhook. And last but not least, yeah, zero downtime is also another big item on zero downtime upgrade is also a big item on our agenda right now, as we would like to aim for upgrading a captain installation while it's running so that there you don't have to shut it down for, for a minute or two, uh, but you can um, yeah progress with all your sequences that you have currently running and in the back, uh, the upgrade is happening. 
and for achieving that goal, um, team uh, implemented graceful shutdowns in all components. In other words, um, yeah, components, when they get a sick term command, then they complete the current task, shut down and hand over to the other, to the updated version. And this is now uh, done in a, in a nicely manner so that upgrades are possible. So there are also API for services. Uh, so to implement graceful shutdown of a service, let's say like Gmeter or whatever, which may also have runtime. Uh, Oleg, you're asking if there's an API or? Uh, yes, yeah, so no. is uh, zero downtime upgrade supported for services in general? No. Uh, it's just for Captain Core, mm -hmm. but not for, uh, in, uh, for, for um, services that are built by someone else. Therefore, we are not taking care of. It's mm -hmm. really just for Captain Core components. Understood. So maybe I'll uh, submit a follow-up ticket, but yeah, it's a great uh, addition. So thanks a lot to the team for that. And yeah, there were a lot of other changes, bug fixes. So yeah, it's definitely a good time to upgrade. And, yeah, thanks a lot to the team. Um, anything else regarding 0 0.12 upgrade? Nothing from my end. Uh, the captain upgrade command works as expected. I just did it yesterday. You type in captain upgrade, upgrade it. Um, no breaking change, no things to, to mention. Great, thank you. Okay, and there are a few caps implemented, including uh, uh, the cap uh, for rule based access control that I would like to discuss later. But so, right. Yeah. Oleg, just, just to make it clear, not the caps are not fully implemented, but yeah. parts of them are taken and they are part of this release. Like, for example, cap 48, which is the bigger topic about high availability and zero downtime upgrades. And here, as I said, portions of that are, are implemented and part of, of the release. Mm -hmm. Understood. So thank you. And yeah, in a great release. Um, yeah, another news. So we had uh, talk confirmations for FOSDOM. Uh, they arrived quite late uh, this month. Um, so first of all, Thomas will be talking about unifying infrastructure and application delivery with Captain at the CI and CD dev room. Uh, so Thomas, would you like to summarize this talk? So um, often as operations or application develop uh, uh, deployment guys, we have the problem that uh, we depend on infrastructure for the deployment of our applications, such as let's let's call them um, ingress classes or storage classes in Kubernetes, and they have to deploy for the infrastructure team and at, in, in the most most of the time, and. Sometimes you do exactly this, these changes in the first stage, so in the development stage. And after some time, you want to promote this to a next stage. And at some point, uh, in some cases, this infrastructure might not be there. And this um, is the thing I will deal with in, the, in, in this talk. So mainly deploying infrastructure and application hand in hand, and also find out how you can deal with exactly these deltas and how you can find out if the infrastructure you want is already there. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, and this will be kind of an integrated captain and cross-plane um, approach. Okay. Thank you. I also got a confirmation for my captain application about uh, uh, SLOs and SLI observability with Prometheus and captain. So it will also happen uh, on a Sunday uh, a bit earlier, so maybe more suitable for APAC region. Uh, I just got confirmation about this talk uh, this night. Uh, so yeah, there is still no link, but the talk will be there. And uh, yeah, also I'm giving a keynote about the uh, revolution of open source CI CD. 
uh, and uh, it will be also including uh, captain. So, yeah, if you plan to participate in FOSDOM, uh, this year it's online. So everyone is welcome to participate. Uh, well, it's one of the biggest uh, open source events in Europe. Uh, um, and currently it's accessible to all time zones. So well, you're welcome. Anything else regarding FOSDOM? Do we have any other news you would like to share? And it says uh, that uh, Captain on uh, key three is also updated uh, for Captain 12. Any other news uh, we missed? No, um, I'm not aware of any other news. Okay, then thank you. And yeah, so the next item for us is actually Captain Community in their park region. So it's uh, maybe a question to Brett, Adam, and Pavan. Uh, what you would like to see, or what is your current experience so regarding communications, community channels, etc. So basically, any feedback you would like to provide about how it currently works for you, it would be appreciated. Mm -hmm. well, I think having this meeting is a really great start. And um, just just raising awareness of open source in general and cloud native in the region is a challenge we're trying to solve. Um, some end user stories would be really cool to see as well to, to show the, the business value of, of what it brings. So just, yeah, I, th I think we're making a good start today in that drive for adoption here. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, and uh, for Slack channels, uh, for user groups, uh, how does it work for you now? Or would you like to see some of these events in the Epoch time zone too? Um, what, do you what do you think? What are your thoughts, Adam? Um, I think it works pretty well with Slack asynchronously talking, you know, chatting to people and um, seeing updates. You know, we're, we're all busy people as well. So I, I think that's been really good. Yeah, absolutely. Slack Slack works for me, um, but of course, the more we can do, um, the better. So, yeah, that's why I was so happy with with this meeting being put in. Um, it's it's like anything we start we start and then we build from there. So, yeah, all good. Yeah. So for user group meeting, I think we can uh, host it uh, also in the same time uh, frame. Uh, maybe we could try with one of the next meetings. Uh, so if you know about any big user of Captain uh, in uh, about to June, maybe you, Adam, uh, or you, Brett, if you would like to present your experiences as a separate meeting, I think it would be also great. Uh, so if you're interested, we can just follow up and uh, get it scheduled. We don't have uh, to schedule even for particular time slot because if we have people to host it, I'm happy to host it. Maybe Andy would be available, and we can just uh, choose a time that it would be suitable for everyone. Sounds good. So for these meetings, I was thinking uh, about doing them maybe every two weeks or so. So doing them on a weekly basis is likely uh, uh, too time consuming for everyone. Maybe we could even consider moving one Thursday meeting to this time slot uh, because, again, the most of Captain developers are based in Europe. This time is generally suitable for them. Um, so maybe we could just uh, move one meeting call together so that we do not uh, increase the meeting load in the community. Uh, but yeah, if you are fine with the time slot, we could tentatively schedule another meeting maybe in two weeks at the same time. Um, and then uh, if it sticks, uh, we keep doing them. 
Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, in my experience, seeing other, um, like for example, the tag security, um, they moved to an APIC uh, time zone as well. And it's good to start really slow and just have, you know, really meetings not all the time because it's hard for it to get people coming all the time. And sometimes people lose interest if there's too many. So I think that's a good case. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, so me, one of the questions is topics, uh, the duplication, uh, because yeah, when we have two different community meetings, uh, we should assume that uh, even more content would be asynchronous. So what it means, uh, making less decisions at meetings, uh, more decisions, so let's say, in issues or in discussions. Uh, but yeah, for these meetings, it, it will become uh, essential to track, uh, to have good meeting notes so that everyone can take a look and see I'm making meeting notes for this meeting. And also, of course, posting recordings, but uh, we leverage uh, the Bevy for, uh, platform for that. So I think it will be important. And uh, also for some topics like CAP65 we have below. Uh, so yeah. It will be. It's a good question how we organize that between two meetings. But for now, I think that uh, if we assume that this meeting mostly for discussions, sharing feedback, but uh, the decisions would happen uh, asynchronously in uh, the cap pull request, I think that it would be totally fine for now. Mm -hmm. So, Johannes, uh, uh, are you fine with that? because uh, we already discussed some decision-making problems we have with the current stuff. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think uh, discussions should happen on the, on the issues and the items itself, and mm -hmm. not, not that much in the, in the meetings. And the meetings should then be used to kind of broadcast the decisions and to make everyone aware what um, has been discussed and agreed on, uh, definitely. Um, Oleg, just one question back. Um, does this then now mean that we take the community meeting on a Thursday evening every second week and move it to? So my suggestion is that um, we definitely keep the tomorrow's meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the tomorrow's meeting, we can discuss how we approach it. OK. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, then we will have people who participate in that meeting, and then we can agree what's uh, their preference. So I will edit it for the agenda, but uh, yeah, I think that this is how we approach it. Uh, for the time being, I'm ready to host um, all meetings, so without changes to Thursday. But if people want to change right away, we can do it as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. up on the meeting notes okay. so anything else about the pack region yeah. uh, question uh, to you Pavan uh, so what would you be interested to see at these meetings uh, what would be beneficial for you as you just start uh, with captain he dropped okay well, I can follow up later uh, so, I think um, then we can press it to the next topic, and it's CAP65. So, Thomas, would you like to take it over and drive the discussion? Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> as I introduced before in the, in the introduction round, um, I'm playing around with several GitOps approaches in the last few, uh, in the last year, to be honest. Um, so, I think, Brad, we, we talked about it, I think, half a year ago. Um, in, the mean, in the meanwhile, we found out that this might not be enough GitOps for Captain. And it might be a good, good idea to have all of, the, all of the Captain configuration things in custom resources in Kubernetes, uh, which also makes the whole GitOps approach by itself easier because we only have to take the, custom re, uh, the manifests for the custom resources from a Git repository um, apply them on a, on a Kubernetes cluster and captain the, uh, and, uh, and 
the controller who with the custom resources does the rest. This, uh, so uh, we created a prototype um, in a, on an innovation day and resulting from this, we created this um, captain enhancement proposal. So um, as Oleg shows, now, uh, Oleg shows the uh, repository for the, for the GitHub's operating now, um, mm -hmm. And currently, this resides in a branch in the GitOps operator repository. So this is in a new GitOps operator branch. Um, there is kind of a documentation in there. Um, I think I also created a hand chart for that. Mm -hmm. And it should be, so the, the captain operator itself should be running if you install the, the hand chart. But at the moment, the Git approach itself does not work. Um, because the Git operator by itself is not runnable at the moment. And this is a thing I will do in the next week. So um, there will also be a talk regarding the Captain GitOps approach and GitOps in general in a DevOps night in Kiev. And um, for that, I will uh, I plan also to, to show the current approach of, uh, of the uh, Captain GitOps operator. Mm -hmm. If you could uh, put a link to DevOps Night Kiev, it would be great. So for this PUC, so currently it still doesn't uh, fully work, right? Um, it worked. Uh, the, the management of captain resources works. So you can create services, you can create projects, you could also create stages. But at the moment, you cannot deliver artifacts with, with that. Mm -hmm. And this is a thing which, which I'm dealing with at the moment. Uh, so you cannot uh, manage projects? Or... You can you can manage project, you can manage almost everything, but you cannot uh, add artifacts to Captain because this is part of the GitOps operator in this case. And you cannot deliver artifacts. In... So you cannot upload artifacts to the Captain Upstream repo, let's call it this way. Mm -hmm. You could also trigger trigger sequences. And, and Thomas, this brings me to a question. I mean, uh, we discussed it offline, but I think it should also be mentioned here in, in, in this meeting, that would it make sense to break the cap 65 into two components the one component dealing with or kind of implementing the, the captain operator for doing all the management of entities projects stages and so on and the other component are focused on the GitOps approach so to have also the discussions uh, split apart i think we could we could split the two caps but the GitOps, the, the GitOps part of the story is highly dependent on the on the captain operator part. Of course, of course, yeah. Uh, the captain operator itself um, is kind of uh, the foundation and the first step, and then the GitOps operator mm -hmm. uh, builds on that. Yes. So this would be possible, yes. I guess uh, it's rather a matter of documentation. Uh, because yeah, if you have two separate caps, uh, they could be documented independently. Um, I'm not sure whether they will be actually shipped independently, but if it's helpful for users, we could split it. Um, I don't have a strong opinion here. Uh, do you see use cases for a captain operator without uh, full uh, GitOps uh, hardness for now? Oh, sorry? So if we split a captain operator um, to a separate uh, cap, does it provide uh, much value as a standalone uh, deliverable? Yes, I think so, because you, you could also um, configure captain via custom resources without a GitOps approach. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sure. Mm. 
In other mm -hmm. words, we could get rid of all the imperative commands, but have a more declarative mm -hmm. way of declaring what I want to have and not telling Captain to create certain things. Mm -hmm. what, we have to th what we have to think about what is not included in the prototype at the moment are that we might have some more custom resources as, as, as specified in the, in the cap currently because we might also have custom resource definitions for SLI and SLO definitions. But um, yes, this, uh, this, these are all things we have to think about and talk about at some point in time. Uh, do you mean uh, semantic metrics via CRDs or the requirements? Um, the, the configuration of the configurations of them. Because mm -hmm. currently they are they are file in the upstream repository, but they are also YAMLs and they also uh, have some kind of a schema, and therefore they could also be implemented as custom resource definitions. And this would would also make the the artifact uh, the artifact part a bit easier because we won't we would not have to to deal with. Uh, with uh, SLI definitions from the uh, in, a, in a different way than the captain configurations. Mm -hmm. So it would also make its way on the upstream, but it would make its way in the upstream on the on the on the captain operator side and not on the GitOps operator side. So, in this case. Uh... I would rather agree with Johanna's proposal that maybe splitting uh, the cap would be nice. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, again, uh, it can be potentially kept in the same pull request. Um, I'm not sure what's uh, the policy for that because yeah, I'm still uh, getting used to the format of uh, uh, captain enhancement proposals when uh, they stay in pull requests for a long time until they're ready to be shipped. So how would you see it? I would see it the way that we just open two new ones and uh, close this draft. And, and just do a reference back that uh, reference to the origin, but uh, having it then uh, split it into two separate ones. Thomas, what do you think? Yes, for me it's perfectly fine. So we could we could uh, make the cap sixty five a bit shorter and um, um, and and uh, move the GitOps part out of this. This was the, would be the first the first approach. Or we close the cap sixty five and create a sixty seven, whatever number we have at the moment. And yeah, numbers are not principal in this part you want to see this so if maintaining yeah, it, would uh, be it, would be it, would, it would be enough if we if we put out the GitOps part and create a new one for that i agree with this approach because we already announced uh, cap 65 in social media as GitOps. Yeah. so for me it would be nice if we could skip uh, if we could keep this pull request as a baseline for GitOps. Mm -hmm. So, Johannes, does it work for you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and a good hint that it has already been referenced in social media and we should keep it, but uh, to keep the discussion focused and uh, also to have smaller pieces to work on, um, I would go for taking out the the captain operator. Yeah, we also have a bunch of uh, references, for example, public demo, the mm. yard, etc. So if you close to this pull request, it will become a pain. Actually, it's maybe a question we would want to discuss later how we organize caps because yeah, this uh, using a pull request has obvious downside that uh, if you want to recreate the, the pull request, then everything goes uh, south. Uh, maybe it's better to have issue as a foundation and then uh, just uh, do pull requests. And uh, another opportunity for that uh, would be 
to actually merge uh, the changes and uh, do them incrementally. So for example, how we do it uh, in Jenkins, sorry for referencing Jenkins too often at these meetings, uh, but in Jenkins we have jobs, uh, but uh, these jobs, uh, we actually have them uh, merged. So there are there is a bunch of jobs and you can see different statuses. So some jobs are actually ancient, uh, not merged, but how we actually operate is that uh, we submit pull requests against the repository and we work on these jobs. Uh, so when you go to the documentation, you can uh, see actual uh, documentation for every branch. You can create a pull request against that and we just keep the status uh, separately uh, so that uh, when uh, the job is ready to be accepted, we do that. But if not, it's just uh, a code in the repository which you can update, uh, which you can still reference. And hence, uh, there is no this many pending pull requests. So maybe it's something we could discuss later how we actually organize it. Because for me, it seemed uh, to be rather an impediment for users that it's all in the pull request, but I'm not 100% sure about that. I'm definitely open for improvement. Uh, we just took a, a look at how Open Telemetry is doing that, and then I stole their approach and applied it to Captain. But if there are uh, better ways of handling enhancement proposals, um, I'm happy. Thank yeah. you. So again, it's something maybe we could ask uh, Captain users about, uh, because what works best for you in terms of search, in terms of uh, observability of and transparency of these caps? Uh, there is a thing coming comment from India about uh, SLO, SLIs, SLOs, CRDs. Uh, so, uh, Johannes, uh, Thomas, what do you think? Um, I think it's it's a different it's a different thing for the Helm charts because the Helm charts should, uh, to be honest, should not be in the Captain Upstream repo because they are they, they should reside in a in a Helm repository. So therefore, therefore, I think we don't have to deal with them only with their configuration. Um, test files are different thing. That's that's true. But the SLIs, SLOs um, are, are, in my opinion, a kind of a kind of invention of Captain. So the, at least the configuration format, and therefore, therefore, they belong to Captain, and also to the operator. Thomas, I don't see it as, as a Captain Core component. SLIs or SLOs, they are coming in from um, integrations, whether it's the Lighthouse service or the Promiso service, which are defining okay. their own format of how they want to have configuration. But I don't see it as a core element. OK, so the SLIs, SLI and SLO configurations are different ones uh, for different um, services behind them. Right. Okay. And then we, um, uh, because we can also think of taking a look, or we can take a look at the Lighthouse service, which is actually part of Captain Core, as we have uh, SLOs built in. But the Lighthouse service just behaves like an, uh, any other integration mm -hmm. and could okay. be also a candidate to move uh, out of the Captain Core repo. And then it has its own configuration, its own SLO configuration. Okay, then I think I agree a bit with Andy. So as the as the might might be different per per mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I will uh, add notes later. Maybe it's something uh, to, to just uh, submit to the GitHub issue as meeting notes. Uh, but yeah, thanks uh, for the feedback and discussion. Uh, to, yeah. Well, I think that it's definitely a nice conversation on the project. Um, and yeah, if you have any feedback, uh, please just comment on the pull request and we can uh, get uh, it uh, added incrementally. Uh, one topic I have to this meeting is whether this proposal is actually ready to be added on the roadmap and whether it's feasible to edit on the roadmap. 
because for me it seems like a major improvement and uh, in terms of uh, captain operations and i think it should be on the roadmap uh, but yeah it would be nice to, uh, to get other opinions just might see it as a very very uh, strong improvement of, of captain uh, but to put it on the roadmap I would like to have it um, split into smaller pieces smaller chunks and also um, already refined and um, described in a way that we know what we want to do but once this is um, done once we have agreed on um, on, on pieces we would like to add to Captain then I'm open to put it on the roadmap. So we don't have a specific uh, process for adding items to the roadmap. I would assume that it's basically the same as before for the items having uh, two Captain maintainers as sponsors. Um, but uh, yeah, it's also something we could discuss later. Uh, but yeah, if Thomas agrees with what Johannes proposed, I think we have a plan. Mm -hmm. And yeah, basically it would go to the refinement phase. And uh, yeah, then uh, regarding planning, I think it's a wide open topic when it uh, gets uh, delivered. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I think that uh, it would be a great start if we have it here. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, speaking of that, uh, so there was brief discussion uh, whether it could be done as a LFX mentorship or GSOC project. So, Thomas, what do you think about it? So, I I think that it would be a nice project for one who wants to get started with Captain because. Uh, when you when you create or when you deal with all of these custom resources and you um, define the logic how this how this impacts with captain, you know how captain works and also this um, might be a good uh, a good first task to get uh, a good first project to get into Kubernetes operators because there is a lot of operator logic inside of the of this and therefore yes I think it would be a good idea for a LFX project. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the question for mentorship projects is about timeline and about uh, um, the probability of it be being delivered. Because when you have a mentorship project, usually uh, one uh, who works on it uh, is less experienced. Uh, there is no guarantee that uh, it would be delivered uh, and would be delivered within a time frame. Yeah. But at the same time, it's a good uh, opportunity to experiment and to see how it goes. So I think that at least having it as project idea would be useful for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally agree, yes. Brad, how you how would you think about this? Because I was just going to say that. Yeah. I, I would be interested in that. Yeah, I was just going to mention that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that would be really interesting for me. Yeah. So speaking of that, maybe we could uh, quickly discuss uh, GSOC and LFX mentorship then, uh, since we're on the topic. Um, so. Um, uh, Google Summer of Code applications open in a few weeks, and I had a proposal that we would participate uh, in JSOC this year. Uh, so basically, I already started uh, assembling uh, possible projects, and uh, based on uh, feedback from Thomas, I would also uh, add uh, basically GitOps for Captain here. And uh, yeah, again, uh, we would ne still need to refine the project idea, but uh, I think that uh, it would be nice to have it here. So uh, regarding timeline, 
if we do Google Summer of Code, uh, this year again, uh, the uh, scope uh, changes compared to previous years, uh, but still uh, it will happen uh, during the summer. And uh, there will be two options, having a full-fledged project, something around uh, 300 hours, and a uh, partial project around 140 hours. Uh, it's of coding time uh, dedicated by the student uh, during the summer. So it's quite considerable amount of time. Um, and uh, the project itself, uh, well, it starts now. So organizations already prepare their project ideas. They already prepare their um, charter for this event. They look for potential mentors. Um, and uh, if our application succeeds, then we would be able to have uh, a few projects. Uh, the number is to be determined um, sometime in April by Google. Uh, after the conversation, but I think for us it would be nice to participate. I've been uh, participating in uh, Google Summer of Code since 2016 as mentor and or admin, and uh, I find that this program really nice not only for finding new contributors, but also for community bonding inside the project because yeah, doing such mentorship programs is generally fun, um, and uh, yeah, it helps. Uh, to get more engagement from uh, mentors and maintainers of ecosystem like, companies like integration services uh, to get them participating in core activities and maybe uh, getting involved in uh, community wide topics. So I think that it would be nice for us to participate. And if anyone is interested in uh, any particular project and would be willing to consider mentorship, uh, it would be really nice. So my question to everyone on this call, whether you would be interested in something specific. Um, uh, so one of, usually for Google Summer of Code, uh, the most of students come from uh, India, Sri Lanka, uh, um, or China or Pakistan. So everything is in the APAC region. So having mentors in this time zone would be really nice. Would anyone be potentially open? What, what sort of mentoring would you be looking at? Uh, yeah, so basically what it means, uh, firstly, uh, providing students with insights to technical area and getting them involved in the community. So getting them introduced to right contacts. And uh, after that, also providing technical expertise and advice during the implementation. So sometimes pull request reviews, sometimes Q&A, and usually it amounts to something like uh, several hours per week of uh, mentor's time. So it's quite a time commitment. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it might be really interesting, especially if you like mentorship, because usually in Google Summer of Code, you have top-notch students uh, who are very committed uh, to the program. Uh, and uh, yeah, for me, it has been always a great experience uh, in JSOC. Uh, so some projects may fail, but the overall um, yeah, uh, success rate is quite high. And if you're good at selecting applications, then yeah, uh, it might be a really nice experience for you. At the same time, it's still a time commitment. Uh, so in Jenkins, we usually recommend that there are two or three uh, mentors working on a single project. So there is some redundancy because, well, firstly, it's uh, summertime, uh, well, uh, not for Australia. Uh, but yeah, many mentors take vacations, especially in August in Europe. Uh, so having some redundancy for mentors also reduces uh, uh, the level of commitment for them and uh, gives them an opportunity to take a break, which is essential for everyone. So uh, I plan to document uh, the charter for Summer of Code and other initiatives. Uh, in the coming week, uh, so, uh, and then bring up this topic again. So, in general, you can find uh, take a look at the some information on uh, Jenkins website because uh, we invested a lot in documentation and guidelines, including the level of commitment, etc. Uh, so, if you 
are interested uh, maybe taking a look at these guidelines uh, at least it would be uh, my ballpark estimation when it comes to captain because i was leading jenkins g sox since 2016 uh, so yeah these guidelines are basically based on our experiences uh, and we try to maintain them uh, um, in an actual state So if someone is potentially interested, I'm happy to work on that and come up with uh, the proposal. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so then I'll probably do that. Again, uh, there is no need to decide anything today or even in February. It's iterative process, but for us, uh, one of the key decision points uh, in February would be whether we apply or not. Because if we apply, then well, well, we still can withdraw later, but uh, it uh, puts some commitment for us as an organization. Uh, and if we accept it, we will be guaranteed to get at least one project slot. Uh, it might be more, might be less, but not less. But uh, yeah, one project slot we are guaranteed to have if we have a good student application for that. Mm -hmm. Any questions, comments? Sorry if I confused everyone with this program. Uh, but yeah, okay, it's quite a big topic on its own. Mm -hmm. So then just moving forward. So I put a question about CAP60. So maybe it's something, uh, Johannes, if you could summarize the current state and the expectations for that, it would be awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, Doc. Um, therefore, uh, thanks for the screen sharing. Can you go to the cap, please? Yep. Because what currently the progress on that uh, topic, uh, the progress is that the team is currently working the OpenID Connect flow uh, into the bridge and CLI. Uh, I have here a screenshot, a little bit down. Another screenshot, it's kind of a visual, yeah, here, yeah, visualization of, um, yeah, implementing the OI DC flow in CLI bridge as well as uh, the distributor. And um, first pull requests are currently coming in. Uh, they are open and, and ready for a review and will then also be part of kept. 0.13 and this then allows you that you connect uh, your captain installation to an open id provider like for example microsoft has one uh, there is key clock out there or um yeah google and all the other all the big names they have open id uh, uh, providers and then you can uh, connect your captain installation with those uh, providers uh, currently, there's also an open pull request on the documentation that explains how you do that uh, with a Microsoft account. Uh, it's currently under review. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. some might be updated. And it would be really cool to see uh, also an implementation with an open source uh, provider on that end. And a key clock, for example, would be uh, a candidate uh, so that I, as an open source user, I uh, have my, my key clock identity and access management system up and running and would like to connect this one with a captain installation. And technically, uh, the foundation is there, but now a tutorial or how-to guide would be nice to also um, yeah, have something for the, for the open source world. Yeah, I totally support uh, having key clock, uh, because key clock is open source project and it's already uh, an aggregator. So once you have a uh, key clock, you can easily integrate with GitHub, with Google, etc. So by doing this integration, you actually provide a, a layer for all other integrations if needed. Correct. Just FYI, the Dynatrace team is currently integrating a uh, captain installation with, with Dynadrive, Dynadrive, um frameworks. 
but it would be cool to see the same on the open source page. Mm -hmm. Once this is done, I'll be more than happy to um, walk it through and, and document how. Uh, um, there's, there's nothing worse than wanting something to work and the documentation isn't good enough. So I'm, I'm a big fan of good documentation. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Yeah, plus one. Uh, yeah, uh, if I understand correctly, it uh, covers only authentication right now. So it doesn't cover authorization. Right now it's authentication. Authorization is the next piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there was a question uh, in the Slack whether there is a plan uh, uh, to use um, open authorization uh, as engine. Uh, so basically Auth2 um, as a layer for that. Uh, has it already been discussed? No, not that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's definitely something we would need to cover because as uh, for open ID, having open authorization is really useful because then we can connect, for example, GitHub Teams, uh, whatever, LDAP, uh, well, and uh, there are standard layers for that, so it could help. But authorization, one of the biggest problems is to actually have this permission layer in Captain, because it's, I guess it's going to be a huge uh, change. So do you have approximate timeline for that? No, uh, no, I don't have a timeline um, for that right now. Mm -hmm. Is it in the scope for cap 60 or do you consider also splitting it out to another cap? Uh, cap, cap 60 has uh, the goal of, of providing an, a default admin, default mm -hmm. reader and write uh, role. And uh, for going further into more fine grand um, user permissions and configuration, uh, I think it will be a follow up cap. Mm -hmm. then. Yeah, that's totally perfect. The bits roles would be managed uh, through internal database so that uh, there would be no external uh, authorization engine. Right. I think it would be already a great start uh, because yeah, we need so many stories that gets brought up every week. So if it gets delivered, uh, I think that it would be huge for us in terms of growing captain adoption. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we are running out of time. Um, so yeah, maybe one question before we wrap up. Is uh, this meeting format useful for you? And uh, should we keep going as is, or should we do some adjustments? For me, it's really good, yeah. I think Adam will probably say the same, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's uh, try uh, to keep doing that, maybe limiting the next meetings uh, to 45 minutes as target with the opportunity to overrun a bit. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, thanks a lot for everyone uh, who participated and provided feedback. Uh, and yeah, Adam, Brett, if you have any topics to it for the next meeting, if you have any uh, challenges with Captain you would like to discuss, or just to share, if you want to share your vision for Captain, I think it would be a great opportunity for us uh, for the next meeting. Sure. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Well, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Thanks, yes. See you in two weeks then. Yep, sounds good. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.